we're basically done with uh, the power series stuff. Um, probably need to talk a little bit more about the error, but I think the best thing for you guys to do there is um, start working the exercises. And when you get to the one about the error, then just come talk to me, right? Um, and uh, it's not rocket science, but uh, we got to keep this gravy train moving out of the station here. So, uh, all right, so we're going to start uh, to quote from Monty Python. And now for something completely different, um, namely um, uh, parametric uh, equations. So this is a new chapter. Um, the other thing is, so the uh, does does anybody have their book with them handy? Okay, what's does it go your print book? Does it go up through chapter eight or nine? I don't remember where it divides them. Eight. Okay, so we're going to start talking about stuff from chapter nine, and these things are in volume three of the book, but the PDFs for this are all free online. Right, just go to Google for Apex Calculus, and the website will come up, uh, and there then you can get get a hold of those. Okay, so um, we're going to do a few things that are out of the multivariable book um, to start. Okay, so um, so let's get started here. Um, so a parametric set of equations. Uh, well, let's start. What are the kinds of functions that we've considered? Right. We've considered something where you take an x coordinate, you shove it into a function, it spits out a number, you call that the y coordinate, and we can graph these things. Okay. Um, what we're going to do now is suppose that we actually have two functions, one that will describe the x-coordinate of a point and the other that will describe the y-coordinate of a point, and the two together therefore describe the location of a point, and we'll make both of them depend on some variable. How about t? Okay, it doesn't really matter. Um, part of the reason we're going to use t is we're going to kind of think about time to some extent and think about um, the motion of the part of a, the point as being like something moving in time through around the, the plane, okay? So, for example, let me just say... Let's just take a, a, an easy example. Cos t comma sine t. Okay, so we'll make the x coordinate depend on the cosine of the t and the y coordinate depend on the sine of the t. Um, and, uh, great. Okay, so how do I graph this thing? Well, Think back to like when you guys first learned how to graph functions back in algebra class. How did you do it? Well, it's a very, very, like way back. Well, okay, if it was a straight line, you could do something like that. But maybe slightly, like, let's say you didn't know it was a line. It was just some function. You made a T-chart, right? And you made a T-chart where you said, okay, um, you said, okay, I have x values, and I'll put f of x values there, and let's say x, f was 1, you plugged it in, you got whatever, and then you started drawing points, and then you sort of connected the dots by making it look decent, right? So you guys remember that? All right, so we're going to do the same thing, except our t-shirt's going to have three columns instead of two. That's all, okay? So um, because I've got t, I've got x of t, and I've got y of t. Okay, and I'll basically just start filling this thing in, and, well, let's see what we get. Okay, so the first thing I've got to do is, where do I want to start t? Where's a reasonable spot to start t? One, zero, something like that? How about zero? Okay, I choose zero. Fair. 
what's the cosine of zero and the sine of zero? Right, one and zero respectively. Okay, and because I've got trig functions here, um, what would be probably a good uh, increments for t? Pi over something, right? Okay, so uh, I'll actually do pi over six next. Okay, just because I we know the unit circle, right? Uh huh. All right, so if I make t pi over 6, then what's the cosine of pi over 6? Thank you. And the sine. And pi over 4. Call. Preferably what's right. What's the sine and cosine of pi over 4? You don't know? Those of you who are online can't see what I'm about to do, which is to beat the crap out of Cole with this meter stick. Okay, do we need to have a punishment quiz over the unit circle? Well, I guess we did, right? Maybe we need to have another punishment quiz. They're both root 2 over 2. All right, what about pi thirds? They switch. And pi halves is 90 degrees, where it's 1 and 0, respectively. Okay, so if I were to graph these things, what's wrong? Oh, sorry, thank you. No? Well, or, or maybe I guess I should do like, uh, uh, you guys know in Monty Python, right, like uh, be a self, self-flagellating, right? Now you guys know that, that scene in Monty Python on the Holy Grail, right, where there's the monks walking down the street and they're like, well, they're not actually, but they're like hitting themselves in the face with a board. Yeah, okay, anyway, it's, all right, so let's graph this thing. What's it going to look like? Well, uh, at t equals, so let me kind of color code this. Okay, so where is the red, the red dot would be here. And then I'll go ahead and do the blue dot next would be here. And do you guys kind of guess what the curve is in between? Given what the equations I picked were? Probably a circle. Right? All right. So what's the, where's the orange dot going to be? It's at root 3 over 2 comma half. That'd be like here. The yellow one is here, and I know that's a little hard to see. Uh, and then the what's the next color? Green here. Okay, and so if I connect the dots, what do I get? Part of a circle, right? And I've only gotten part of it because I only did zero to pi halves on t. But if I had continued this t chart game. Uh, to d say do the next value, the next special angle, which would be uh, 7 pi over 6, or sorry, um, not 7 pi over 6, uh, uh, 5 pi over 6, no, 4 pi, 4 pi over, no, blah, 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 blah. okay, I'm sorry, what is pi halves plus pi sixth? 3 6, 4 pi over 6, 2 pi thirds, okay, what would that next one have been? It would have been like the green dot just reflected over the y-axis, and I would have been drawing the part of the circle that's in quadrant two, and then three, and then four. Okay, so I'm tracing a circle here. Which direction am I tracing it for increasing values of t? 
I'm going counterclockwise, starting on the x-axis, because that's just the way we set up trig functions. Okay, good? Yes? Okay, so I get a circle, uh, but, I'm, but the benefit of thinking of this in terms of as a dependence on t is that I kind of have a directionality associated with it, right? So this thing is tracing for increasing values of t, it's tracing the circle in a counterclockwise direction. Could I reverse the direction? Sure, but I'd have to, um, I'd have to modify the equations to do that, okay? Uh, and could I make it start at the top and go clockwise, you know, like an actual clock does? Yeah, I just have to, to mess up, mess with the equations a little bit. Okay, but I could do that. Okay, so does this kind of make sense? All right, now, how can I prove that this thing is a circle, by the way? Uh, other than you guys seem pretty convinced it's a circle, but how do I know it's a circle? What would happen if I took x squared plus y squared? I'd get cosine squared t plus sine squared of t. And what is that? That's 1. Excuse me. Right? So I can always, um, it, by means of some algebra, I can convert this thing back into a Cartesian expression with just x and y. I might be able to get it as a Cartesian function. I can't in this case because the circle, of course, big time fails the horizontal line. I mean, sorry, the vertical line test. Um, but I can at least get it into a Cartesian equation, which tells me that, yes, in fact, this is a circle because x squared plus y squared equals 1 is the equation of a circle. In this case, centered at the origin, radius 1. That should come as no surprise here, though, right? Um, okay, Gucci or Prada? Okay, so does that kind of make sense? Yeah? Okay, so now, what about if you have something really squirrely or you want to double check that we haven't messed this up? Would it be nice to be able to graph this thing in Mathematica? Yeah, that'd be great, right? Okay, so let me show you how to do that. Um, where's my Mathematica button? There it is. Okay, this needs to go to Mathematica. Yeah. Okay. And we blow it up. Okay, so. Here's how we're going to do this in Mathematica. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define a function. Um, okay, you probably shouldn't do x of t. Let me do capital X of t. And the reason is because I don't want to, uh, if I use little x as the name of a function, then anytime I use little x as a variable, it's going to be all kinds of jacked up. Okay. Um, because it, the little, little x can only represent one thing at a time. So I'm going to use capitals here just to avoid that problem. All right, and x was cosine, y was sine, oops, and then I'm going to define a function p of t for parameterization. It's going to be x of t and y of t in a set of curly braces with a comma in between, okay? So what this means is that P of T uh, for a value of T gives a point, okay? It gives a vector um, with X coordinate given by X of T and Y coordinate given by Y of T, okay? And then I just want to plot that thing, okay? So I'm going to do parametric plot of p of t is the thing I want to graph for t from, say, 0 to pi over 2. Okay, and what do we get? We get the quarter circle like we had before. Okay, what about if I want to draw this for um, more values of t? Well, I did t from 0 to pi halves, but of course we could certainly increase the range. So 
uh, if I did it from, say, 0 to 2 pi, what am I going to get? The entire circle, and that makes sense. Right? Okay, good? So this is another way to do graphing. So what we've used here is the parametric plot command um, where you give it a function that has an x-coordinate function and a y-coordinate function, and then the range of t, or whatever you call that, that parameter, and then there you go, right? Uh, now, what about if I did this t from 0 to 4 pi? Well, what? It would look the same, and why? Why does that make sense? Exactly. So t from 0 to 2 pi, I would, no, it's not. It's the same circle, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> this isn't real, real. Yeah. Okay. So what happens if you go from 0 to 2 pi? Well, I start at 1 comma 0, and I start traversing the circle counterclockwise, and when I come back to where I started, I've gone through, gone to t equals 2 pi. So if I go from 2 pi to 4 pi, what am I going to do? The same thing, and I'll just trace right back over the exact same circle. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, good. Uh, on the computer? Uh, it varies based on where you are, right? Because it has to do rounding to get it onto a screen, right? So sometimes it's going to be a little over and sometimes a little under. But, right, what you are seeing on the screen there is a mere shadow of the immortal form that is circleness, right? Have you not read any Plato? Plato? Uh. You were supposed to humor me, Will. Yeah. Okay, well. Yeah. Is to, yeah. All right, well. Uh, so uh, I was trying to be funny, but there's sort of the, the mathematical concept of a circle, and then there's this particular representation of one. And this is always imperfect, but the concept is perfect. Right? It's philosophy. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, so let's see. Um, what I want to do next is I want to talk about um, a very particular form of parametric stuff, okay? And um, namely, so let me make a, uh, a really crude picture, or crudely drawn. It's not going to be crude content. Okay. So here's a cannon. Yeah, I know. I guess it's more like a telescope. Uh, let me put like. Oh, that looks. Um, that's yeah. Let's let's yeah. Let's start over. I'm sorry. Um, uh, okay. So let's just say we have a cannon, and our cannon is this point. Okay, and we're going to shoot something. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We're going to do some, some, start to do a little bit of physics here, right? So the cannon is going to fire this object at some angle theta, okay? And it's going to do so with some velocity v naught, okay? So the projectile is going to go something like that, right? I mean, you guys know if you throw something, what shape should you get? Yeah. Yeah, it should be a parabola, right? If you throw it really hard, then it goes into orbit, and then you're talking about a, 
either ellipse, parabola, or hyperbola, but basically, you know, on human distances, it's a parabola, okay? Uh, to for the for the distance to be maximized, yes. Uh, it depends on how fast the thing's going. Yeah, the, assume a spherical cow, and we're doing this in a vacuum. Yeah. Well, okay, this would be like say an Apollo on Apollo fifteen or fourteen. Which one was it that? So one of the guys smuggled a golf club and a golf ball up to the moon, and then he hit the golf ball, and of course it, you know, right? Um, well, there's all kinds of hijinks that, I mean, if you're going all the way to the freaking moon, right? If you can get it on board, once, you, once you're in space, what are they going to do to you, right? <laughs> so um, anyway, so we fire the cannon, we throw a ball, whatever, right? There's going to be some initial velocity, and the um, uh, the angle that we throw it at. If we want to maximize the range, the distance that this thing gets down range from where we throw it, then Cole's right. Forty five degrees does do that optimum, and in fact, eventually we'll be able to prove that. Okay, uh, but once the thing leaves the cannon, or once the ball leaves your hand, then what? Uh, what is uh, what controls its flight? Just gravity, okay, if we neglect air, right? Um, and if you're throwing a tennis ball, it's reasonable to neglect air because, or n neglect air resistance because the, the, the air resistance term uh, is proportional to the square of the velocity. And so it has to be going pretty dang fast for that to actually start to, to matter, okay? Um, and I mean, like you're not a pro baseball player, so yeah, okay. Um, all right, so only gravity really matters. And so let me just write down what the equations are. Um, turns out that they're this, okay? And uh, we'll be able to kind of prove why that's the case um, next time uh, when we throw the, get the calculus into this. But for now, it's just uh, V naught T cos theta is the X, and V naught T sine theta minus one half GT squared is our Y coordinate. Okay, now let's think about why that makes sense. Well, which way does gravity pull the projectile down? Okay, so that's why uh, the gravity term only appears in the y part, because gravity is an up and down concept here, and gravity has no effect on the x motion of this object. It only has effect on the y motion. Okay, good. Also, it's pulling down, so that's why I've got a minus in front. Now, the fact that there's the one-half gt squared shouldn't be a big shock. If I took the second derivative of that, what would I get? If I took the second derivative of minus one-half gt squared, what would I get? Negative g, right? Well, what is the second derivative? Acceleration. What is the acceleration? Negative g, because that's gravity, right? Okay, so that makes sense. Um, and uh, then the other two terms basically are just uh, uh, decomposing uh, a vector into its constituent components. And we'll talk a bit more about that on Friday, uh, I think. Uh, but these are the equations for uh, projectile motion, okay? So the number V naught here uh, basically is a, it's a number and it describes how fast do you throw the thing. Uh, or what's its initial velocity? And again, we'll talk more about that detail on, uh, excuse me, on um, Friday uh, when we throw the, get the calculus into all of this. Okay, so uh, let me just pick some constants here, uh, and let's graph one of these things and make sure it actually is parabolic. Oh, and I am so sorry, guys that are online. I completely forgot to switch 
back over to the Elgato. Okay, so here are the equations. Um, yeah, you guys are probably like, what is he talking about? Um, okay, so here are the equations of per, uh, projectile motion um, uh, there. Okay, so uh, it's a good thing I didn't switch over because my bad drawing is now not live on the internet. Only you five saw it. Okay, so yeah, Dunaway's not going to make fun of my uh, attempt to draw a cannon that looked more like uh, something else. Uh, that was not intentional, I promise, gentlemen. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, those are the equations, right? We've got the x coordinate basically. Uh, if, uh, and let's think about this. What about if I fired the thing straight up? Well, then what would x of t be? Zero. It would always be zero. Okay, that makes sense. If I throw an object straight up, it's going to go up, and it's going to come back down, and, you know, I could catch it or something. Um, and that makes sense because the cosine term, the theta there, the, is the launch angle, and if I'm throwing it straight up, what's theta? 90 degrees or pi halves radians, and what's cosine of 90 degrees? Zero. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, okay, so let's pick some values for this. Um, and since Cole mentioned 45 degrees earlier, let's actually do uh, that. Okay, so let's say that our um, initial velocity is one unit. Okay, whatever. Okay, and let's say that our angle is pi halves. Okay, and uh, so what would the other coordinate be? It'd be t, co oh, sorry, uh, sine of pi over 2 minus 1 half g. Okay, what's g on Earth? In meters, it's 9.8, so we'll do that. Okay, end curly brace, right? So what did I do? I put in... The x function in the first spot, the y function in the second spot, comma in between in the pair and the curly brace. Okay, but then I need to say what range of t am I interested in? Well, let's go 0 to, I don't know. Let's just go to 5 and see what happens. Okay. And, uh, Um, yeah, that's a very good question. Um, that's interesting. Um, oh, <laughs> I'm an idiot. Sorry, guys. What's 45 degrees? So, <laughs> I just graphed what would it, it would look like if we threw it straight up. Well, big shock, right? It's going to be straight. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Okay. So, it does look terrible. Okay, and the reason it looks terrible is because... Um, uh, so let me, uh, let me slow down, rescale our units a little bit. Okay, that looks also terrible, so let me do this. Um, yeah, that's basically what I want to do here, so, um, Well, it's not a circle, it's a parabola. Okay, so there. Okay. So uh so the problem here is the the you the scale of the units, right? So uh, actually what I need to do is uh, I need to I need to crank this up, not crank it down. There we go, that's better. 
Okay, so this would be basically assuming that I throw it at 10 meters per second initial velocity. Okay, um, and um, that makes sense, right? Does that seem reasonable? Uh, now, a uh, couple of things just to kind of preview of attractions. Uh, what are, well, let me graph it. Uh, this is t from 0 to 1. Okay, so let me let me go off a little further here to say two. Okay, um, there's a couple things that we could ask, namely, this point right here. Oh, and I'm sorry, guys. I'm I forgot to put the Elgato on, then I forgot to let them see Mathematica. You guys online, I'm so sorry. They'll hire anybody to teach around here, huh? Yeah, several of them are across the globe, so they don't really have that option. So, okay, so what could we be interested in? Well, Cole picked 45 degrees because he thinks it maximizes the range, namely, uh, and it does, right? That is true uh, if you neglect wind resistance, obviously. Um, and so what's the range here? Looks like it's just a little bit bigger than 10 meters, roughly. Okay, so how could we find that point? Like it, it graphically is 10 point something, okay, but algebraically, how would we find what the range is here, namely when the thing hits the ground? What do we need to do? Well, when do, hitting the ground is equivalent to what? When y equals zero, okay? So take y equals zero there, or sorry, the y coordinate, which is 10t times, what's sine of pi four? Root two over two, right? So replace that. So set the y coordinate equal to zero and solve that for t, please. Okay, so do that. And I'm going to sit here and be comfortable and stare menacingly in your general directions. That was weird. Okay, so you've got the, uh, the particular Y coordinate here. Uh, so take the y coordinate, which is 10t sine of pi over 4 minus 1 half times 9.8 times t squared. Set it equal to 0 and solve that for t. Okay. Now, how many answers are you going to get when you do that, by the way? You should get 2. What's one of them? t equals 0. That makes sense, right? Because the thing is on the ground right before it, we throw it. Okay. It's the other one that I'm interested in. Okay, so put your hand on your head when you have correctly found the other um, the other value of t. Or actually, you know what we're going to do? This is something we did a lot with the calculus class last year, and it worked really, really well. Well, you have a red cup, you have a yellow cup, and you have a green cup. And when you've solved the problem, you put the green cup on top. When you're working, you put the yellow cup on top. And if you need help, you put the red cup on top. Huh? Very, very infectious. Very corona. Well, no, they're they're conditioned cups, right? So 
If you need help, put up the red cup. If you're working and need to be left alone, you put up the yellow cup. And if you've finished and you're good, you put up the green cup. Right? And then I can scan across the room and see what how everybody's doing based on what cup is on top. <laughs> okay. All right. So what'd you guys get for the other value of T? What'd you guys get for the other value of T? We have a specific data because we plugged in. Yeah. Well, that's the one you picked, bro. Pi over 4 or 45, right? Because you're taking the sine or cosine of it. Okay. So you guys probably got something. Let me replace here my 9.8 with 98 over 10 um, because... Then I get it as an exact number, 50 squared to 2 over 49. Does that look uh, familiar? Yeah, algebraically? Uh, well, well, we'll do it after class. Okay, but you get the idea, right? You were just solving a quadratic equation. There are two answers. One of them, t equals 0, is the obvious answer. And the other one, okay, yeah, 50 root 2 over 49. It's a little messy, but meh, whatever. You get the idea, right? Good? Okay, and numerically... What is 50 root 2 over 49? 1.4438, 308, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so how long does it take for the thing to hit the ground? Yeah, just a little bit under 1.5 seconds. Okay, that makes, that's fine. Um, but that tells us when it hits the ground. Does it tell us where it hits the ground? Yes and no. It doesn't directly tell us, but could we figure that out? Okay, so if I know that t equals 50 root 2 over 49 is when it hits the ground, how do I find out the location? What do I need to do with that value of t? I need to substitute it in to which equation? I need to substitute it in for t in the x-coordinate. Okay. Now, what would happen if I substituted it into t for the y-coordinate? What should I get? Yeah? Because that's how we found that t in the first place, right? We know that the height is 0 when it hits the ground. That's the definition of the ground. Okay, it's the x-coordinate that we actually are interested in. Okay, so plug 50 root 2 over 49 in for t in your, uh, your cosine thing there. And what should we get? Well, it'd be 10 times 50 square root of 2 over 49 times square root of 2 over 2 which is 500 over 49, and as a number, that's 10.20. Does that seem reasonable based on our graph? Yeah, so just slightly over 10 meters, assuming that this is all in meters. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so does that make sense? We found the value of t, and then we associate it with its coordinates by substituting that into our uh, parametric equations. Okay, so that's projectile motion uh, 101, and we'll talk more about that um, uh, next time. Okay. Uh, okay, now, in this case... Um, so where are we going with this? Well, because we're talking basically physics-y sort of stuff, right? Projectile motion. doesn't have to be projectile motion, but with the projectile motion, certainly makes sense to talk about this. Um, 
could I ask what the velocity of the uh, ball is? Okay, well, yeah. But could you answer the question, or do you think we could conceive of how to answer the question if we do a little bit of work? Okay. Yeah, I could change up the equations, right? So this doesn't have to be a projectile, but uh, the point I want to make is um, this is a calculus class, right? We want to ask calculus class questions about parametric functions. What are the calculus questions that we might want to ask? Yeah, Jack? What's the derivative mean? Okay, and how do we compute it? Okay, arc length is definitely something we could uh, ask about and therefore compute. And that one's fun because it, it relates both an integral and derivatives, right? Because how do you get the arc length in Cartesian stuff, it was what? Square root of one plus F prime squared and then you integrated that thing, right? So it was both an integral and a derivative kind of mixed together, yeah? Okay, so we could ask, what is the velocity of this thing? Or what's the derivative mean in this case? Now, we should be a little careful here because if I ask, what is the derivative? On Monday, what would you have said? The derivative is what? The slope of the tangent line, right? Okay. What's velocity in a, in a, uh, okay, the, careful. What is velocity in physics defined as? Change in position, okay. Well, that depends right on your frame of reference, but what kind of object is velocity really in physics? It's a vector because it has a direction, right? So, it has a direction and a magnitude, okay? Speed is what? It's only a number, okay? It's the magnitude of the velocity vector is the speed. Those are not the same kind of object. One is a number, the other is a vector. Okay, so let me tell you my, one of my favorite jokes. What do you get when you cross a mountain climber with a titsy fly? Uh, Titi fly is an insect that uh, transmits uh, African sleeping sickness. Okay, so it's kind of like mosquitoes transmit uh, malaria, right? Uh, and the titsi fly is this particular fly in Africa that transmits another disease called African sleeping sickness. Okay, so the answer is nothing. You can't cross a scalar and a vector. And you know the cross product? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Because it transmits a disease. Right, so that's the, the epidemiological term for vector. Yeah. It, it's a multidisciplinary joke. Yeah, I know. What day is it, Mike? Mike, 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 Mike. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Uh, we could ask what the velocity is. Now, the velocity is a vector, right? And so we need to, to sort of know how to play the language of derivative versus velocity, okay? Similarly, if we can talk about the velocity, we could also talk about acceleration, which would be the derivative of the velocity, okay? Uh, and then for each of these things, we could worry about how big they are, meaning things like speed, okay? So um, it should not surprise you that what, well, what other calculus questions could we ask about this uh, projectile motion that we just did? Well, I could ask how far did the thing fly, meaning what's the arc length, okay? I could ask how far did it land, which we just found was the 10 point whatever, um, but I could also ask, well, where is it when it's at its maximum height? First off, can you guys guess, just from the symmetry of the situation, 
what the value of t is that would make that happen, and also, therefore, what the value of x is that would when that happens. It'd be half of this number, the 1.44, right? Because that's when it goes all the way to land, and the max point is going to be half that time, and therefore also half the distance. Okay, that makes sense. But how can we find that in a calculus sense? What are we looking for to get the peak of the, uh, uh, the path that it travels, Jack? When the derivative is zero, okay, now we need to be a little bit careful there because which derivative would be zero there? Only the y's version of the derivative would be zero there because the thing's still moving, right? Okay, so another way to put that is the derivative is actually going to be a vector quantity here. Its x-coordinate is going to be one thing. Its y-coordinate is going to be something else. And the peak is the instant when the y-derivative is zero. Okay, so it's a coordinate that we're looking at. You okay, Cole? Yeah. Gravity is a cruel mistress, isn't she? Um, yeah. Okay, does that make sense? Like that, that idea? Okay, so that's where we're gonna kind of go with this is to start thinking about the derivative, okay? And what does it mean and how do we find it, et cetera? Yes, okay. Um, and all of those things that we we were kind of asking about, what kind of calculus -y questions can we ask here? That's what we wanna do next, okay? All right, so. 9.55. We've had a great time, hopefully. It's Wednesday, but we, we, we had fun. We had some calculus. Everybody's happy. Nah, well, it's calculus class. I mentioned the word derivative, so we're covered, right? So, all right, those of you who are at home, um, hope you have a good rest of your Wednesday, and I will see you guys on Friday, if not sooner.